the DJ. And sorry for the technical difficulties, although the technical difficulties did allow for Noah to order some vi- wings from your favorite place, right? Best wing place in America? You love this place. No, you're not a B-dubs guy? No, I ordered B-dubs because they have the only fucking place that's open that has wings there. <laughs> Other than, like, pizza places, but not all that wings from that fucking pizza. Bro, you're not going to get some Pizza Hut wings? No. Wow. I, I, will, I will take it to my grave that Wingstop is a thousand times better than B-dubs. All right. I mean, and cheaper. And cheaper. They are cheaper. I will say they are a lot cheaper. Although I don't know why Wingstop was closed, but Five Stop is open. You know? I don't want chicken thighs, so. Obviously, I so. I want wings, so. Whatever. It's, a, it's an epidemic, bro, that we're running out of wings. It's going to take me 66 minutes to get to the Windows. Well, luckily, we got enough time for a couple more technical difficulties. and Another, uh, another reason I hate B-dubs is because <laughs> they're so fucking slow. So I, I don't need to go on a rant about how much I hate B-dubs. No, you don't. They have mediocre wings at a way too expensive price, and they still give you them. So. Fair enough. We'll enjoy them when we get here, but AJ, I believe we were talking about the Las Vegas Raiders against the New York the Raiders Giants when when shit cut off. Yes, um, AJ, you you like the Giants to cover this one, dude? I love three the points. Giants to cover this at three points. I'm not buying that anything. Three points, easy. I like the Raiders. I I told you. I get that. I told you a couple weeks ago. I said they're going to make the playoffs. Yes, they will make the playoffs. This is a playoff team. Yes, they are. This is a good Raiders team. I agree, Noah. Um, I honestly think they're better now that Gruden's gone. I, I agree with you 100%. I think, I think Derek Carr now has his opportunity to take over as a leader and finally be a leader. And he's taking it. Um, Gruden, obviously a huge personality, which huge. is why Carr couldn't be the full-on leader that he is capable of being. Definitely. Um. I think the Raiders are, are going to be better now that Gruden's gone. I think uh, Carr's going to really take over, and he's going to be that leader of the team. He's going to be that – he's going to be the face of this organization. And um, the Giants aren't that good. They're not. Despite their close game against Kansas City, which is why I think this line is only three. Um, I like the Raiders to just dominate them. I get it, dude. I, I might take an alternate line on this. I might take the Raiders up to like six and a half on this. One. Jesus Christ! Get those plus odds. I mean, yeah. If you if you believe in them that much, I don't blame you taking plus odds on them. I mean, you know, they lose rugs, obviously. Which we've talked about that already. We're not going to talk about it again. But um, he's in my mind their second best receiver. Yes. Um, third, if you include Waller. Dude, Waller's a fucking stud. Waller's a stud. Renfro. God, Renfro also. I, I just I just love it. Um, I mean, if you're ever fucking live betting, tracking anything, live betting, um, there's a reason they call him third Renfro. <laughs> because third down, they're going to Renfro. Uh, dude doesn't score a lot of touchdowns. His yards aren't immaculate. But he is good for seven or eight receptions a game. Oh, easy, Which, easy. If you're in PPR, I mean, it, it pays off the amount of catches that Renfro gets. Um, he's a stud. Waller's a stud. Waller's a stud. Uh, they got they got, they got a couple uh, a couple young receivers, too, that, you know, it, it'll be fine. I think Ruggs wasn't a focal point. Of that was offense. not a focal point. Was a deep threat, but not that big of a loss. It's a loss, However, regardless, I will say this on air. I, like, I will say this like, on air like, on camera right now. I like the Raiders, man. I like the Raiders. I get it. And I, I like them to be in this. With When we come down to the final three weeks of the season, I like them to still be in the hunt. Noah. I, I think the Chargers or maybe even the Chiefs will win this division. I don't know why I'm still on the Chiefs here, but. I, th- I think this division is going to, like, last three weeks of the season, it's going to come down to Raiders, Chargers, Chiefs. They're all going to be very close. Um, all of them are going to be, like, two or three games above 500 coming into that final, like, couple games. Yeah. And it's going to get real interesting in this division. I know a couple weeks ago I said three t- 
team out of this division who will make the playoffs. Yeah. AJ, I still think three teams. Noah. Out of, I still think three teams out of this division will make the playoffs. And I don't think the Chiefs will win it. But I think the Chargers and the Raiders are each going to be about a 12 win team, 11 or 12 wins. Chiefs are going to be right at 10 or 11. Um, AJ, I, I, I still think this. I don't, I don't know if they're the toughest division in football, but they're. They, they might they're up be, there. They might be number two. Number two, the easy. N- the NFC, NFC West the NFC is still West the is hardest. Not, they are not number one anymore. No, they're definitely number one. No, Noah, shut the fuck up, dude. They're definitely number one. Two, what are you talking about, they bro? Have, they have two teams that are very good, but Seattle and San Francisco suck. Seattle sucks without Russell Wilson. Seattle still will beat Gino's Seattle. Been, Gino's been doing just fine. Regardless are of... Are, are they that much better of a team with Russell than Listen, Gino? I will give you the 49ers. I told you at the beginning of the season the 49ers were the worst team in the NFC me. West. And, and they were predicted they were projected to win 10 and a half games. Yeah, they're not fucking doing that. And, and I took I took the under on that. Yes, as we but, both did. But it was a tough pick for me. You were very adamant about the under. You were huge on fading the 49ers this year. You were very correct on that. Um Seattle can still win games though. That's why I still say this NFC West team is the hardest division in football. No. Because, yeah, you have the Rams and no. the Cardinals who are absolutely dominant. No, and think, then Seattle think, can I win think, a game in whenever they want. I think, I think now it's, it's – I think it's the AFC North now. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> Not even a chance. The Bengals, Ravens, Browns, and Steelers. Bengals are a joke. Steelers don't have a quarterback. I'll give you the Ravens. I'll give you the Bills. You're saying you're saying through and through, you still think the NFC West is the best division? Hundred percent, one hundred percent, dude. Not even a, not even close, not even close. This and because yes, 49ers suck, absolutely. Bengals though, joke. Bengals are a joke. Steelers, they're not gonna do shit. Ben Roethlisberger we'll can't do anything. We'll see. We will. We will. I guess um, we should move on to the next game. But. All right. I do want to say, a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned the AFC West <coughs> might be the toughest division in football. You did mention that. I don't like the Broncos, but the Raiders, the Chargers, and the Chiefs, you know. Chiefs they, suck. They have, they have not, not you got all, two good teams in that division. Not all been off to great starts. But this is a dangerous division. Dangerous, yes. I don't know that I fully think they're number one. Not even close. But they are a, they're one of the tougher divisions in football. Um, with the with the way the Niners and the Seahawks have been playing, I don't think the NFC West is. I am. I, I was on the AFC West for a while. I'm now on the AFC North as the toughest division. I understand. I get it. Through and through. I'm talking through and through. No, yeah. Um, All right. Their top team that might not be the best, but um, anyways. So wait, time out. Time out. Before we go to the next game, I want to keep on this tangent for a hot sack. We're obviously not going to agree on the toughest di- division in football. We're not going to do that, which is fine. But agree with me on this. The winner, the NFC championship this game this year, the NFC championship game this year is going to be the Super Bowl. That is truly going to be the test of the two best football teams in the NFL because the NFC is just so dominant right now. The NFC is way tougher than the AFC. Absolutely. And that's why I think that whoever wins the NFC championship is winning the Super Bowl. Yes, but with the Derrick Henry injury news, um, which honestly the Titans were in position to move themselves in to the place of being, you know, despite their Jets loss, um, they were – Looking like the best team in the AFC. Without Derrick Henry. <sighs> it's tough. They're still going to make the playoffs. They're still going to win that division. Yeah. Um, especially with, you know, two wins over the Colts already. Um, the Jaguars and the Texans aren't going to be the best. No. Um, the Bills move back into that number one slot, I think. Yeah. 
shown signs of weakness. They have in the past. They have in the last couple games. Uh, God, the NFC, you have what, like four or five teams with Dude, one s- loss? Disgusting. Disgusting. The NFC is just disgusting. Well, and it's interesting because you listen to these experts. Experts. <laughs> the, I don't know shit, bro. How is it? How is it? They're, they're it? talking about it. And you, you know the two teams that they, they, you know, they're like, oh, who's going to win the NFC? You know the two teams that weren't mentioned? Let me guess. One loss teams? Let me guess. Packers? Yep. Rams? No, and the Cardinals. Cardinals. That's, we have two losses now. You're right, my bad, my bad. And that kind of blows my mind, Adrian, the fact that they're, you know, they're, they're, they're on the, the two lost bucks and the Rams. Which yeah. I'm not going to shit on the Rams because that was my preseason pick to win the Super Bowl. Now that they're adding Von Miller, I texted you. I'm doubling down on the Rams. I love yeah. the Rams. As I, I love them. I love them. I mean, I'm, I'm taking them hard on plus odds to win the Super Bowl. But the fact that the Cowboys are being mentioned over both the Cardinals and the Packers oh, with these quote-unquote NFL experts. Oh, it's me terrible. A, give me a fucking, it's terrible. Give me a fucking break. The, and the Cardinals are getting disrespected because they've been, way they've disrespected. Been, they've been shitty for so long. I don't understand why the Packers aren't getting disrespected. I can't. I can't understand that either. The, in my opinion, my personal and all, all, all we've done is won seven straight games after you know one bad loss. And even Vegas, losses. even Vegas isn't giving them respect, considering they were before the Aaron Rodgers news. They were a pick 'em against Kansas City. They should have been minimum, minimum a three and a half point favorite. I wrote it out beforehand. I had them as a seven and a half point favorite going into this game regardless of COVID status and everything, but Vegas releases them out of pick them, now a seven and a half dog. Fucking ridiculous, dude. You know what? We might as well talk about that game since we're talking about we'll skip ahead a little bit. Packers, a seven and a half dog going to Kansas City, plus 280 on the money line, 48 for the total. Jordan Love is more than likely the starter. However, Blake Bortles was playing a round of golf today. And got a text and is in Green Bay as we speak. And per reports, he was even He'll be the backup. going through seven. He'll be the backup because uh, Kurt Ben Kurt, the other quarterback on the roster, right, also tested positive for COVID. Oh, I didn't know that. So that's why they signed Bortles to have him as okay to just have him so, as a backup. Yeah. So Bortles is there. He knows the system. That makes a lot of sense. Well, he he, uh, he was there for. Yeah, up until Rogers said he was active. Yep. Um, but Ben Kurt, our other quarterback on the roster, also active. That makes a lot more sense now. Okay, that makes a lot more sense now. Um, we, need, we need somebody to be there in case Love gets injured. Um, Jordan Love, he... Didn't play terrible in preseason. No, and you look at his college... A lot of touchdowns. Very, uh, dare I say, Brett Favre. <laughs> huh, I wonder why the Packers drafted him then. <laughs> Jordan Love, he's going to get a chance to start against one of the worst defenses in the NFL. Yeah. Packers defense has been doing much, much better. Much better. Much better. I will give you that. Can we also talk about the fact that you're getting Lazard back? Lazard back. Might be getting. Marquez Valdez Scantling. Oh, man. He's, he's supposed to be back from his hamstring injury. Devontae, we don't know yet, but he. We, we're waiting be, on that. He may be back if he can produce those negative tests. Uh, dude. If, if, if you give love the weapons that the Packers have. Disgusting. And they are weapons. And people have been shitting on it. Aaron Rodgers doesn't have enough weapons, blah, blah, blah. Lazard is weapon. Lazard's a, a serviceable receiver. He's great. MVS is a good deep threat. Good deep threat. Um, the Packers have better receivers than half the league. Yeah. 
Uh, it would probably rank right in the middle. Uh, in, in like, if you average out the total in each league. I'll give you half. But if Devontae is healthy and able to play, we, kn- we I mean, we know what Jordan Love has done in college. We don't know if that can translate to the NFL. No, we He's don't. never played in an NFL game. Other than no, the, never, except preseason. snaps at the end. type of quarterback where you know he's gonna get the touchdowns but you're also gonna get the interceptions i don't know this chief's defense is really really bad so bad so bad and and then and mahomes is leading the nfl in turnovers well that's because he's not patient he can't be patient bro he hates he is the complete opposite of tom brady he hates check down passes because that's all the giants were giving them they were leaving those two safeties hanging and then they were like please check down all you want run the ball all you want you guys can't do it he tries to play hero ball and you know jair injured uh hopefully kevin king's still out i hate that i say that every week but i like when kevin king is out because if kevin king is giving up some really 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 bad plays so bad excuse me Stokes gave up one bad one, one, one bad pass against D Hop last week. Yeah, it didn't end up with a touchdown. Don't get me started. Don't get me fucking started on that. But Stokes is ninety percent good. Yeah. Um, Rasul Douglas, I love, love the way Rasul's playing. He's uh, what six, six or seventh year veteran. Sealed the game last week. Obviously, A.J. Green didn't even turn his head for the ball, but it doesn't matter. He retired last week. It's all good. Rasul got it done. He's been leading the team in tackles the last three weeks. Uh, he's got a couple interceptions. He's playing insane. Um, got revenge over his former team. He was on the Cardinals practice squad. He was. The Packers signed him off the Cardinals practice squad, and he's been starting for the Packers. So... Clearly, All right. Like, anyway. Like, All right. Anyway, get to um, your fucking pick. Get to your fucking pick. What you taking? But I kind of, I kind of like the way the Packers' defense is playing. Um, we're, you know, Zadaria Smith coming back soon. Um, we might have David Bakhtiari, the best offensive lineman in the entire fucking NFL. Finally back. Back. May or may not be back this week. If he's not back this week, he's back next week. Dude, if he's back but, this week. But Bakhtiari is the best. He's not only the best left tackle, but the best offensive lineman in the yep. entire NFL. Yeah, 100%. I mean, dude's a fucking stud. Uh, Chuck Pierce has no other two. Uh, God, really incredible. Uh, dude can just delete beers. Delete them. Um, you taking the backers in the seven and a half? I, I'm taking them on the spread. Cool. My, my long-winded answer is yes, I'm, I'm <laughs> taking the Packers on the spread. And this Packers team was very banged up. A lot of injuries against the Cardinals. Still won. Uh, this one will be a little bit tougher because obviously Rodgers is the hugest of the injuries. Yep. Not injuries, but out. people out. Um, dude, this Packers team is fucking insane. I don't even know what the hell to expect. I agree. I agree. Don't fucking sleep on us. Matt LaFleur, most wins by any head coach in his first 40 games. Um, I'm just, in, in Matt LaFleur, I trust. And that's he's, why. He's going to find a way to craft this game plan that works around Jordan Love. Yeah. They might not throw it a lot. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the Packers just ran the ball down the throats of the Chiefs, who have a terrible run defense. See a lot of Aaron Jones, a lot of A.J. Dillon, and uh, run that possession and that clock. And Noah, for every reason you just gave, I'm taking Packers money line, bro. That's a tough one. I, I might I might sprinkle a little on the money line, but if you're giving me seven and a half over a touchdown on the spread. Oh, yeah. The spread is just a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm hammering that. I, and I'll take the, the spread, problem, too, but I just want to have the, some fun. I want to take the money line. The problem is I don't know what to expect from Love, but I think he'll, I think he'll perform. 
Texans will be fun. I do too. And Noah, let's go from your favorite team to cover to my favorite team to cover. Arizona Cardinals visiting the San Francisco 49ers. Cardinals, it's it's a pick 'em essentially. Cardinals a one point favorite, minus one twenty five on the money line, plus one oh five for the. Is Kyler playing? We don't know. Apparently, from what I've heard, from what I've read, it is the same injury or the same type of injury that Dak had last week, where it was a very game time decision. With that being said, I picked this game with Kyler being out. I pick this game with Kyler being out. No Kyler Murray. No. Is this is is, is it Strebler? No, Colt McCoy Strebler. is our number two. Strebler is the number three. Strebler is number three. Colt Strebler, McCoy is our number two. Strebler cannot throw the ball. He cannot throw the ball. That motherfucker can run. He can run like no other, dude. I loved watching him play. Well, yeah, he was uh, he was the Minnesota quarterback for for two years. Yes, and then performed excellent in the XFL, and then we signed him. He's a stud. Simple yeah, as that. I just remember the game at Minnesota that they, uh, they won the game. Yeah. Um, and he was two for nine passing. And again, can't pass the ball. That's why we're going to go with Colt for, McCoy. For, for like 20 yards, but he had, he had like 180 yards rushing. So. Yeah. And, no, I'm going to be honest with you. It doesn't make any sense for the NFL. I don't know why the Strebler is <laughs> even on an average NFL roster. I, I well, think. He transferred to, he transferred to uh, South Dakota State. Went, went FCS after uh, he couldn't do it in FBS in Minnesota, but regardless, hey, Stre- kudos to Strevy. I mean, he's getting paid to be a quarterback in the NFL. You know what? I mean, hey, shout out to you, Strevy. Um, you're great. Anyway, I don't know. back to the actual game at hand, Noah. It's disrespectful that even with Kyler Murray out, this game's out of pick 'em because the 49ers are frauds. I'm not saying he is. I'm not saying he is. D Hop, he isn't day to day, but he might as well be. He's got some hamstring thing that's kind of fucking him up. That's why he saw limited snaps going into the that's, last game. That, that's huge. If D Hop's not in, I like San Francisco. I still don't like San Francisco. Because Zach Ertz is picking up that slack, bro. If Kyler and D Hop are both out, I like San Francisco. You can take him spread or money line. Well, I take a money line if it's if Kyler and D Hop are both out. What if just Kyler is out? Well, then I like Arizona. I mean, this is one point spread. I like Arizona. I like Arizona too. I'm taking a I money like, line. I like them to win this. So I'm staying off of this one. Yes. Now, uh, because my my bets on this game are entirely based on. Who is available? Who is Fair. playing? Who is not? Like I said, Kyler out, but D Hop playing. I still like Arizona. If Kyler and D Hop are out, give me San Francisco. I understand it. I just hate San Francisco. This might be more of a homer pick, but I really, I really don't think even with D Hop and Kyler out, San Francisco can win this game. I really don't. Obviously. We saw how the Packers exposed Arizona's run defense last week. Very true, very true. I think we learned from it, though. I think that I think this Arizona team is an older, mature team, especially they're Kingsbury. Four, they're giving up four and a half yards a rush. Yeah, and that's going to stop. You think it just immediately stops? Them? No, but I think I that. San Francisco, who's a very run-heavy team. Yes, very run-heavy team. I think we're going to scheme for it. Okay. The Packers usually don't run a lot. Y'all had to run a lot because you didn't have any fucking receivers. Well, there's no secret about it. That's what the Packers were going to do coming into that game, and they I, just imposed their will on the Cardinals. I, I think – don't get me wrong. I think they underestimated A.J. Dillon and your running backs and everything, and I think that was their fault. That was the downfall was that shout they out, underestimated. Shout out A.J. Dillon. Love that man. Dude, honestly, his runs the, were unbelievable uh, last week. Quadzilla. The quad, Dude. The quad father. Dude, like three guys would be whatever. on him, and he just kept fucking going. Whatever nickname you want to use for him, <laughs> but those are my two favorite: is Quadzilla and the Quad Father. Holy shit, this man's got tree trunks for legs. Dude, they're fucking huge. And he's apparently kind of fast too when he gets up. Oh yeah, when he gets into fucking open field. <laughs> uh, he's a shifty motherfucker. 
Anyway, uh, we've could, already spent could. like 15 minutes on the Packers. All right, let's move on. One final thought. Fine. When Aaron Jones moves on, and I hear there is another one running back on the Packers. Yes. Could this man be, I mean, he's only in his second year this year. Do you think A.J. Dillon could be a top five running back in his, at, like for any given year? As oh, absolutely. Year? No, no. I would agree. I mean, he's, yeah. he's got he's got the power, the speed, and the elusiveness. I mean. he, f- Dude, he, the way he looked Thursday was just unbelievable. Oh, he's only in year two. I'm Un- so excited so for him. Stupid. I'm so excited for him. So stupid. Anyway, let's get to a game note that you and I are both excited about. I love this line because Vegas is just being fucking disrespectful. We're going a little backwards here on the schedule because we jumped a little bit forward. We're going Chargers at Eagles. Chargers are a a one-and-a-half point favorite, minus 130 on the money line. Totals at 50 points, Noah. Dude, one-and-a-half. Are you fucking kidding me? Give me the Chargers all day. That's That's stupid. Stupid line. Stupid line. Yeah, they were coming off a bad loss to the Patriots, which was kind of a close game. Yeah. Um, Patriots are better than a lot of people have them at in the league right now. Um, how the fuck is any team over 500 only a one and a half point favorite against the fucking Eagles? So, honest to God, I have a theory about this. It's because the Eagles just blew out Detroit. But not even that. Detroit, not even that. It doesn't matter. Just fucking slam, <laughs> slam everything you have on the fucking Chargers. They're Honestly, gonna they're gonna win this game. They're gonna win it by easily by two points. It's not hard. Honestly, there's no doubt about it. Pick an alternate line. Pick the Chargers up to like fucking eight points. <laughs> like, really though. Like the Chargers, they got a fucking. This is gonna be a big Herbie game. Mm-hmm. Herbert's Herbert's going for like. I'm going to say three passing and one rushing touchdown. Shit. In this game. He's going to go off. So, okay. Herbert, anytime touchdown might be an interesting well, that's bet be to play. Terrible odds, but, but well, hey. Well, because anytime will only be for rushing. No, I understand that. But you say he's rushing for one. I agree with you. He might rush I'm for three one. Three passing, one rushing. I'm saying, I'm saying Herbie goes completely off. Uh, you sprinkle a little bit on that. Yeah. Line, as high as you can fucking get it, minus like 12 and a half or whatever the hell it's at. Just take it because fuck the Eagles. They suck. They're coming off of a big win. They're going to be elated. They're going to be like flat. They're going to come out flat. They're going to come out flat. So also, boom, slam Chargers first quarter and, Ooh. First, and first half line. Um, first half line I love. Herbert's going to have a fucking fantastic game. He's going to have a great game. He really will. Going back one more game before we move forward on the rest of the schedule. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We got two more games before we move forward. We're going Broncos out the ca- at the Cowboys. Cowboys, 10-point favorite going in there, minus 450. Total at 49.5. Dak is due back this game. Not confirmed, but he is due back this game. And so here's my thing on this. AJ, I hate the spread. I hate the spread too. I kind of don't though because here's my thing on it. If you're going to rest Dak another week because this Cowboys team, as you and I have both said, they're going to make a playoff push. They're going to make a playoff run. They should rest him another week. They're playing they the should. Broncos. Exactly. And Cooper Rush last week looked good. He looked, looked good. fucking great. So why do you hate the spread? I like him at 10. Okay. What do you like him at? Four and a half. Shit. Yeah. You think it's going to be that close? Like, I, I jump on it at three and a half. Um, I don't know. I just, I don't know who's playing a quarterback. Fair. Yep. You let Dak rest because you're going to win this next game. Should. Nothing's ever a... Nothing. Nothing in the nothing, NFL especially. Nothing's ever a gonna or a guarantee in the NFL, but um, if you're Dallas,
now it's like you should win these games with Cooper Rush. I think you play Cooper Rush. Yeah. One more week. Let Dak make sure that that injury is healed. That's uh, even if they play Dak, I don't. Man, ten's a lot. Ten is a lot. That's a two possession game. It's tough. I, I'm I'm taking Denver. I don't love. Whew. I don't love the pick. But I know. Ten and a half. Fair enough. I am. I'm gonna do it, dude. I'm gonna take Dallas, and I know the public's gonna be on this. I know everyone and their mothers is gonna be on ten, and I'll take it at ten. I think Dallas is good enough, especially with Cooper Rush, to finish this out. I think they're a damn good football team, and I, I, I don't think they win by ten with Cooper Rush, though. But I think they win. I think they win. I just don't. And I agree with you, but that money line is just, I just can't take that money line. I can't take that money line at minus 450. They are a 500 team, but they're a fake 500. All right, one more game going backwards, Noah. Team we both hate, a team whose team colors are purple because they love to choke. We got the Minnesota Vikings visiting the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens a six-point favorite. Sorry? Two purple teams, but one of them that's purple because they love to choke. True, very true. We've seen it multiple times. I mean, Ravens minus 270 on the money line. Vikings plus 220. Over under at 49 and a half. Bro, do we even need to say a word or are we both on the Ravens? Because I'm on the fucking Ravens heavy. I'm not. Really? Point and a half. All right, I, I respect the seven and a half. I think every single Vikings game this year has been a one possession game. That's why I love the six. That's why I'm picking up the seven. Seven and a half. Fair enough. <laughs> love to take the game down to the fucking wire. <laughs> and they love to make things very, very fucking interesting. They do. This Vikings team can't decide if they want to lose or win until the last two minutes of any fucking given game. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm taking Vikings at seven and a half easy because I think every single game they've played this year has been a single score. Let me double check this right now. You can. I'm going to let my pick known right now. I'm taking Baltimore minus the six. We can still both win this bet because you're taking my seven and a half. I, 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 need, I need to make sure I'm not spreading false information. No, you can but, do that. I'm just uh, saying I like Lamar Jackson a lot. I like what this team is doing a lot. I love the minus six. So, so, so here we go. Vikings. Uh, week one at the Bengals. Lose by a game-winning field goal by the Bengals in overtime, 27-24. Uh, week two, lose 34-33 to the Cardinals on account of a missed field goal by the Vikings that they that they almost won that game. Uh, beat the Seahawks 30-17. to That's not a one-score game, I guess. Uh, lose to the Browns 14-7. Beat the Lions 19-17 on a game-winning field goal. Uh, win in overtime against the Panthers. And uh, last week, the, the Cowboys with the game-winning touchdown pass at the very end. Um, what was it, that one, one maybe two games that yep. they've not had go down to the fucking wire? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Every single one of these Vikings games comes down to the last two minutes of the game other than maybe one. Well, not maybe one. For sure one, maybe two. I got to take the Vikings. Cover Dude, I don't. Because they, yeah. they, they play every game this way, and they suck. They, they suck. do. <laughs> they suck. I hate them. But 
they fucking somehow find a way to like come down to the wire. And they do. Every one of their games is decided on a last minute touchdown or field goal. Fair enough. Fair enough. So that's why I'm buying it up to seven and a half. And yeah. Should be an easy night. Should be an easy night. Next game was an easy pick. Well, no, this wasn't. This was not. An easy pick when the lines were released. However, I believe now it is a very easy pick. We're going Tennessee Titans at the Los Angeles Rams. Rams a seven and a half point favorite, minus three eighty on the money line. Titans plus three hundred over under at fifty three and a half. Derrick Henry, he's done. He's out for the season. Adrian Peterson will not be ready this week. I don't think he starts Sunday. Well, True. It doesn't he's, suck. He's, just, he's not Derrick he's Henry. Just, he's just old. Yeah, he's not Derrick Henry. He's just old. I mean, Adrian Peterson was the had the, probably the greatest decade of any running back we've ever seen. Yeah. But with that being and, said, and, who gives and, a shit? And he's a future Hall of Famer, but he's 38 years old. He's not. Seven. 37. Yeah, no. Check your fucking facts. I agree. In this in this lineup, rather than wait and he was signed to the practice squad. And so yeah, he hasn't even been promoted. He, he, he hasn't. He has not been officially signed to their actual roster. This team's gonna have to throw the ball a lot more. They are, and the throwing the ball worked really well for this team when they had Derrick Henry and when they were stacking five, seven guys yeah, in the box. Well, when you draw it, seven or eight guys to the box. It's yeah. pretty easy to throw it when you have one-on-one. I'm curious to see, because when you start getting A.J. Brown. Double coverage, double. Julio Jones double coverage. Julio probably Fuck. won't get double teamed a whole lot, but Julio's washed. Yeah. I've been saying this for like. You have been saying this, three, but I mean, three, he hasn't been. Year or two. He's been fine. Not number one. He's not number one receiver, obviously. No, 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 no. He's, he's washed. All right. So what are you going with on this game? And A.J. Brown's a top ten receiver. I believe he has COVID. A.J. Brown has COVID? It's A.J. Brown or A.J. Green. It's a fucking A.J. Either way, the Titans... The tough part is... Might still be able to run the ball well, but they're not going to be able to stuff you hush. No. Run their play action and run their passing shit with like single coverage. Uh, it's going to be a much much tougher time for AJ Brown. He's going to have to deal with double coverage now because teams won't be respecting that yep. run game as much. And the Rams have just been on fire, bro. It's it's tough. I still like I still like the Titans a lot. I think they're gonna they're they're still gonna make the playoffs. Yeah. Um, Derrick Henry hasn't been ruled out that he could return for the playoffs. I oh no, I just said regular season. But they have enough of a lead in the division. They're gonna win their division regardless. Um, I the seven and a half. It is a rough spread. I think I'm going to take the Rams at home with the seven and a half. Dude, I'm all over it, dude. All fucking over it. If Derrick Henry was in this game, this game would have been at probably four and a half, three and a half. Love seven and a half with Derrick Henry out. I am all over this Rams spread. Like, it's almost disgusting how much I'm over this Rams spread. I just would have loved a healthy Derrick Henry, too. It would have been They're such a better Chiefs game with a, Der- with a healthy Derrick Henry. If beat the Chiefs, and if they beat the Rams too, then, I mean, that's a fucking dominant win for the division. But they still wouldn't even be in the top five for the rankings, though. Somehow, I don't know. Can't All right. On but we got one one last game. One last game that I want to then. AJ! Noah, let me. Let we me... have the Chicago Bears! Yes, sir! <laughs> Chicago Bears. And again, Noah, 
I said it on the last podcast, and I'm going to say it again. Steelers are a six and a half point favorite. Oh, yeah, they are. I think that's a little too much. Do you? <laughs> Do you? You're, so, you're laughing hysterically. I don't know. I, don't I really. So, this game, more than anything, I depends kinda, on I who coaches. Like, I kind of like the Bears to cover. No, re- I, who's coaching? I do. Because let me tell you, hey, Matt the, Nagy. The, the, last, the last two times I took the Bears to cover, they did. That's true. But let me tell you something, Noah. I, I, like, I like the Bears to cover. I, I, under, I can't fucking believe you. I really can't believe you. I determined the Bears' destiny. When I choose them to cover, they, <laughs> they do. And they, and they win. Stay into the fucking microphone so I can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> but, AJ. What are your thoughts on this game? I mean, Steelers minus six and a half. Yeah. Listen, Matt Nagy has done incredible the last two weeks not coaching whatsoever. Steelers kind of suck, though. Steelers don't have a quarterback. They kind of suck. The Steelers don't have a quarterback. You can tell me you got Big Ben under center, but they don't have a fucking quarterback. But Big Ben's quarterback draw on that two-point conversion. Oh, don't get me. That got, that got canceled <laughs> by a penalty. That was so disappointing. The slowest. It was pretty. The slowest fucking quarterback draw I've ever seen. <laughs> but I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Big Ben, as slow as he is, running it in. Um, obviously, he didn't count because he got called back. Yeah. Um, uh, AJ, I mean, what? I, I, I hate are, are this, game, bro. this game, bro. Are the Bears going to win? I don't know. I don't think so because they're the fucking Bears. And honest to God, well, honest I, to God, I, sure I think. As, I sure as hell love them at the six and a half. Um, I might buy a point and get them at seven and a half and like slam that hey, and put a little bit on six So I will, I'll will. i make my pick right now. I'll make my pick. If Matt Nagy. You're not going with the Steelers, are you? If Matt Nagy is not coaching, I'm taking the Bears six and a half. If Matt Nagy is coaching, I'm taking the Steelers seven and a half. Matt Nagy mm-hmm. is literally Matt. No, give me a minute. Matt Nagy is literally almost as bad as AJ Hinch is to baseball. AJ Hinch, obviously manager oh, of the out. cheating pieces of shit shout Astros. Out, shout out Braves. Shout out Braves putting those. Bastards in their place. Especially Honest to God. Dude, and fucking Jose Altuve, that smug piece of shit. Fuck him. Anyway. Fuck. That guy sucks. Anyway, Matt Nagy is the worst coach in the NFL. He is the only coach to just do really good when he actually doesn't coach. And Matt Nagy, honest to God, I don't think he's going to coach this next week because I think he's getting fired because after this week we have our bye week. And so I like Uh, the Bears to cover because Matt Nagy will not coach because he's getting fired next week. You guys are about, it's like you guys are game under 500 though. That's the problem. No, I understand that's the problem, but it's not the problem because Matt Nagy sucks. And we are looking for a fucking excuse to get rid of him. Because Brian Pace right now, our GM, is under so much fucking pressure. And I know this motherfucker. He will do whatever he can to save his job. So if he needs to sell his head coach down the river, he has no problem shoving him out of the fucking bus. He has no, no problem doing that. I think those two are tied together. They're, They're going out together. Oh, no, I don't think so. I think I think if Ryan Pace has his way, you think, you think Pace is gonna save himself? Oh yeah, dude, it's the really? fucking dude. It's the really? NFL. It's 2021. People will save their own neck for literally less. I, I don't mean, think this is not this is not a duo. I, I think those two are tied together. This is not a Robert Kraft, I think Bill Belichick situation whatsoever. Well, I agree, they're tied together. They've been they've been nowhere near as good, but I think those two. <laughs> tied together so tight that like if one gets fired both of them are getting fired so i agree both will get fired but naggy will get pi- fired before pace i think i have to suffer oh, one both, more year of I, pace i think they're both gonna get fired at the same time well i hope it's this next fucking week dude because i literally cannot stand another week of them because i am taking not, not as not as long as bears stay around 500 
Dude, and that's and we've talked about this. We've talked about this they, multiple they gotta, times off camera. They, how they miserable gotta, it is to be a they, Bears fan. Because these motherfuckers gotta, will stay at five hundred and then we keep our same head coach and our same GM who doesn't do shit literally all year and I'm supposed to sit here fucking rah rah, thank God we made five hundred and get a shitty draft pick and can't do literally anything next season. God damn it being a Bears fan suck. With that being said, I like them to cover the fucking spread, okay? Take the Bears a six and a half over Pittsburgh. I hate it. So I, we have changed your mind. You like the Bears. No, I hate the fucking Bears, yeah. Noah, but I like them to cover six and a half. I like them to cover six and a half as well. I hate it. Hate it. I hate, hate you. Matt Nagy, Ryan Pace. I literally never use the word hate. I hate you guys. Please stop ruining the Bears organization. If you want fucking free money on anything, just uh, fade the fade the puck line on the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, oh, that too. They are going to be absolutely terrible this year. Uh, I'm ashamed that I didn't bring it up earlier. I've talked to AJ about this. I've said this since like their I don't know, second, third game of the year. This is going to be a historically bad hockey team. Dude, um, we're about to lose the team. Arizona's about to lose this team. Well, yeah, and I'm hoping they go to Wisconsin. They're not going to, but okay. Wisconsin hockey team. They're not going there. Um, but yeah, just uh, whoever's playing the Coyotes, bet them. Minus one and a half. Puck line. Easy. Uh, shit's up like 10, 11, 12 units already through nine games. So. Ten games, because they lost their last fucking one, too. And I fucking took the money line because I figured, because, why? because why? my dumbass, why? because I figured there is no fucking chance they are the first NHL team to go 10 and L, 0 and 10. And here we fucking are. AJ, I texted you and told you just fade them every single game. I understand, Noah. I know what you texted me. And you didn't listen. No, I fucking didn't listen. Yeah, they suck. Yeah, I know they suck, this dude. Will be, this will they be, suck. This will be historically bad team uh they'll be one of the they will crack the top 10 for sure of worst records ever yes they might not even win 10 games we might be looking at like a fucking 860 and like 12 like record so Bro, you're saying they win 12 games holy shit or 12 being over 10 losses so oh uh, eight wins, 60 losses Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, eight wins though. Yeah, I might be generous, but uh, this team fucking sucks. Just fade them, fade them, fade them, fade them. This is bad. Bet against the Coyotes every single fucking game because they are terrible. They are. They are. Noah, before we sign off on this epic and NFL edition of Degenerate Bets, you got anything else to say? fucking Jordan Love picks up his first win of his career. Goes 1-0 and as a starter. Uh, Chiefs defense is absolutely fucking terrible. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens with the slate. We will, we will. This is, a, this is a fun slate. I feel really good about this slate, except for the fucking Bears. But that's a completely different conversation. Noah, I'm going to say it's been awesome to have you in person. We're going to have you in person one more time this upcoming Sunday and or Monday for Degenerate Takes on the entire college football NFL slate. It's going to be a fun time, dude. Yeah, we might be uh, might be talking a little bit of uh, NHL. Oh, definitely. Or, uh, We're due on NHL. Yeah, we're about an eighth of the way through the season. So yeah. We'll start talking about that a little bit. talk about it all so we'll uh we might have a little fun episode where we uh cover all the professional sports yeah um stay tuned really get into the nitty-gritty and and because we literally we have some hot takes coming yeah honestly like we may honest to god we should consider starting a discord and just having that be our like text chain 
so that people can see what we say to each other because honestly we have hot fucking takes literally all day long i mean today especially bro we were going back and forth with just some ridiculous shit and a lot of news today a lot of news dude today. today was insane and it's gonna continue to be insane and i'm here for it bro i'm all here for it we will be back next week with more degenerate takes and everything like that. If you're in Tucson, yo, shout us out. Come say hi, whatever. I mean, we're not, we have like fucking 10 viewers, so it's whatever. <laughs> but 500, we've hit 500 subscribers on TikTok. So oh, yeah. fucking follow us on TikTok at degenerate takes 69. And if, if you're a sub to us on TikTok, you can find us in, in Tucson at whatever. Bars, I will buy you a drink. So, how about that? Ditto on that. Except I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna take a shot. Some, you know, Tucson. Well, Gotta take a shot. Matter. Yeah. I mean, shot to seal the drink this time around. But if you come up to us and actually say, "I listen to degenerate takes," yeah, we'll fucking hook you up. But with that being said, we will be back next week covering everything, sports, degenerate, all that shit. Next time on. Degenerate takes.